I know that I speak for the entire Cruz family, the entire Cruz team, when I tell you how many Hoosiers we have fallen in love with on this campaign. All the wonderful people who have shown up at rallies across the state, the retail stops where people let what looked like awesome food get cold <laughs> while we all stood and talked about the state you love and the state we have come to love and the nation we all love. <laughs> We came together as fellow warriors, warriors in a cause, to save the soul of our party, the character and the future of our nation. And that cause continues, and you are warriors still. You know, you know what makes this country extraordinary. You know that we are extraordinary because while people are gifted by God all over the world, it is only in this nation that so many people have been given the opportunity to realize their God-given gifts. And we've been given that opportunity because we were founded on two powerful ideas. One, that each of us have a right to find and use our God-given gifts, a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That those rights come from God and should not be taken away by man or government. And the other idea, that power concentrated is power abused. And so when power gets concentrated in the hands of too few for too long, too many Americans and this nation suffer. And you know, as I know, that in this nation, extraordinary people step up. You have all stepped up. And it has been my great pleasure, my privilege, my honor to stand by and fight alongside one of the great citizens of this extraordinary nation. The Ted Cruz that I have come to know, the same man that you have come to know. This is a man who favors substance over sloganeering. Who favors respect over insult. Who favors positive policy solutions that will actually work over hand-waving. It has been my great privilege and honor to come to know him as a friend, as a husband, as a father. He is indeed a great citizen of this great nation. And so citizens, fellow citizens, as we fight on for the nation we hold dear. As we know that our history is long and our future is longer still, please join me in welcoming a great man, Ted Cruz, his wonderful and brilliant and great wife, Heidi Cruz, and the two girls that I have come to love as much as you have, Caroline and Catherine, a great American family.
God bless the Hoosier State. Let me tell you about the America that I love. Our nation is an exceptional nation. We were founded by risk takers and pioneers, brave men and women who put everything on the line for freedom. We began with a revolutionary idea that our rights don't come from kings or queens or even presidents, but from God Almighty. That every one of us has an unalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that to protect those rights, the Constitution serves as chains to bind the mischief of government. For more than two centuries, we have protected those rights. We believe in equal rights for everybody, that everybody deserves dignity and respect, whether they agree with you or not. That there will always be evil in the world and injustice in the world, but America stands up to it and confronts it. Even from a Montgomery jail, our voice for justice and equality rings out for the ages. America is hopeful, optimistic. America is kind. We are not boastful or mean-spirited. America is brave. We keep our word. And we believe in peace through strength. We have spilled more blood, spent more treasure in defense of liberty than any country in history. Yet we do not engage in wars of conquest. We do not seek to enrich ourselves at our neighbor's expense. America is the land that gave my mom, an Irish-Italian girl growing up in a working-class family, the chance to be the first in her family ever to go to college to become a pioneering computer programmer in the 1950s. I love you, Mom. America is the land that welcomed my father as a penniless immigrant. He'd seen oppression, prison, and torture in Cuba, and for him, America was hope. It was opportunity. In 1957, if someone had told that teenager washing dishes for 50 cents an hour, that one day his son would be elected to the Senate and he would get a chance to cast his ballot for his son to be President of the United States. That teenage immigrant washing dishes could never have believed it. And yet that's exactly what happened only in America. In recent months, a lot of people have been talking about what happened 40 years ago at the Republican convention in Kansas City, our party's last contested convention. When I look back at that convention in Missouri, I think of the speech that Ronald Reagan gave to our party. He spoke not of the next four years. He saw not the close horizons that are of interest to those who seek to build their own fortunes in the short term. But instead, he looked to the distant times that, that concern the men and women whose purpose it is to secure the blessings of liberty to their posterity. Ronald Reagan spoke of the next 100 years and of the generations of Americans 
who would come to know whether our nation had escaped the existential threat of nuclear war, who would know whether our party had succeeded in its fight against the erosion of constitutional freedoms that only grow and multiply under rule of the Democratic Party. Ronald Reagan spoke of the purpose that defined our party then and that must unite and drive our party now. The Republican Party of Ronald Reagan and of George Herbert Walker Bush ensured that thousands of nuclear missiles that the Soviet Union and the United States had targeted each other were never fired, and that Soviet communism was consigned to the ash heap of history. They fought hard so that our American freedoms were not lost to any foreign fo foe, nor sacrificed in pursuit of any domestic agenda of the Democratic Party. Yet the challenges we face today remain as great as ever. Americans are deeply frustrated and desperately want to change the path that we're on. We have economic stagnation at home, and our constitutional rights are under assault. Under the Obama-Clinton foreign policy, Russia has emerged as a resurgent threat. China looks with a covetous eye on the lands of our allies in the region. A nuclear North Korea and a near-nuclear Iran yearn to devastate our homeland. And radical Islamic terrorism unleashes an evil that threatens the world. This year, two weeks before our party gathers in Cleveland, all Americans will celebrate the 240th birthday of the United States of America. American parents and grandparents will watch the fireworks with their kids and will dream of the grandchildren and great-grandchildren to come and wonder how those future generations of Americans will remember what we do not only this summer but in the coming decades. Will we rise to meet the challenges that face our nation on the international stage or will we withdraw and cower timidly from the world? Will we secure freedom of thought, expression, and religion for future generations? Or will we succumb to the tyranny of a political correctness and the temptation of racial politics and balkanization here at home? Will we hold fast to our founding values of rewarding talent, hard work, and industry? Or will we continue on that path of creeping socialism that incentivizes apathy and dependency? Will we deliver control of health care to citizens and their doctors? Or will we continue down the Obamacare road to second-rate socialized medicine? Will we keep America safe from the threats of nuclear war and atomic terrorism? Yeah. Or will we pass on to future generations a land devastated and destroyed by the enemies of civilization? This is the responsibility with which we have been charged by history. This is our challenge. This is the fight that falls to our generation. When we launched this campaign 13 months ago, we saw a movement grow. The pundits all said it was hopeless, but we saw over 300,000 volunteers all across this nation. Over 1.5 million contributions, averaging about $60 each. Many of those volunteers, many of those contributions, you never forget. 
just a few days ago, two young kids, ages four and six, handed me two envelopes full of change. All of their earnings from their lemonade stand. They wanted the campaign to have it. That's what built this campaign. That's what fueled this movement. Thank you to each of you, incredible patriots who have fought so hard to save our nation. <laughs> and I with you. I am so grateful to you, to my amazing wife, Heidi. To our precious girls, Caroline and Catherine. To my mom, the prayer warrior. To my dad, who has traveled this nation preaching the gospel. To Carly Fiorina, who has been an incredible, phenomenal running mate. What you have done, the movement that you have started, is extraordinary. I love each and every one of you. From the beginning, I've said that I would continue on as long as there was a viable path to victory. Tonight, I'm sorry to say, It appears that path has been foreclosed. Together, we left it all on the field in Indiana. We gave it everything we've got. But the voters chose another path. And so, with a heavy heart, but with boundless optimism, for the long-term future of our nation. We are suspending our campaign. But hear me now, I am not suspending our fight for liberty. I am not suspending our fight to defend the Constitution to defend the Judeo-Christian values that built America. Our movement will continue. And I give you my word that I will continue this fight with all of my strength and all of my ability. You are extraordinary. And we will continue to fight next week and next month and next year. And together we will continue as long as God grants us the strength to fight on. For one thing remains as true today as it was 40 years ago in Kansas City. In this fight, for the long-term future of America. There is no substitute for victory. There is no substitute for the America that each and every one of us loves with all of our heart, that we believe in with all of our heart, and that together we will restore as a shining city on the hill for every generation to come. Thank you to each of you, and God bless you.
Ted Cruz announcing he's ending his quest for the presidency right now. Take a look at this. He's embracing his wife, his father, his whole family is there. He has suspended his campaign following a devastating loss to Donald Trump tonight in Indiana. Donald Trump, I think it's fair to say, for all practical purposes, is now the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party, even though he doesn't yet have the, uh, the magic number of 1,237 delegates. He is well on his way. Doesn't look like anything is going to stop him. Donald Trump emerges as the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party. Interestingly enough, Jake Tapper and Dana Bash, no congratulatory word to, Ted Cruz, uh, to Donald Trump tonight from Ted Cruz. No, uh, no uh, effort that we're going to endorse you, work for you. Simply a statement. He was suspending his campaign. And the use of the word, Jake, as you know, suspending is for, for political reasons. He can still continue to raise some money as long as he doesn't formally announce he is ending his campaign. Yeah, just in case he has any campaign debt and who knows what's going to happen at the convention, I suppose. But um, first of all, in terms of his not saying anything about Donald Trump, he had plenty to say about Donald Trump just a few hours ago with some of his strongest attacks yet, calling him a pathological liar, calling him a serial philanderer. There was even more than that. Um, so I think it would be tough to say all of that in a heartfelt manner, which I believe he did, whether or not you agree with the charges, and then uh, come out and say, but I'm going to congratulate Donald Trump and I think he should be the nominee. That's going to be very difficult. Second of